Hello once again, and thank you for joining us here for the third in our series on cha-cha. Uh, this particular video is going to be a little bit technical, and I don't want that to frighten you off or scare you off. I'm going to quote a friend of mine and one of my mentors, Judy Hatton, currently first vice president of the National Dance Council of America. And she said many years ago that most people think of technique as a dirty word, but it's really just a way of doing things successfully and who among us does not want to be successful? So I think if we frame it like she did at that moment, that we say, oh, this is how I get what I want, I'll do the work. So when we dance waltz and foxtrot and tango and the dances that move around the floor, we walk as though we're a little kid with our feet scuffing under the leaves in the autumn, so our toe slides on the floor, we get under the leaves, then we kick them up and land with the heel. When we dance the rhythm and Latin dances like cha-cha and swing and mambo and bolero, our toes stay on the floor. So when we walk forward, I think of this as though my foot is a doorstop wedging in under the door and stopping my movement closer to the foot rather than to continue a kick of the shin that releases the toe from the floor so that I can move more freely. That having been said, we're going to try to keep our toes on the floor all the time. I'm going to start with my right foot this time as though I was a follower in the American style or a leader in the international style. And we're going to step to the side on one. And you'll notice that even though we're stepping sideways, we're not landing on the inside edge of the foot, that the knee has released forward and the shin has gone out to the side, but the knee is still in front of the foot. So the pressure applies to that foot from the front towards the ankle. Doesn't make it all the way to the heel, makes it to the ankle, which is about where the back of your arch is. When we go forward to the left foot, once again, the left knee releases forward and slightly inwards. So even though the foot is going forward, instead of landing on a heel, we land on the front of the foot and even as our body moves towards that front foot, the pressure goes from the toe, again, backwards towards the ankle, towards the back of the arch near the front of the heel. Your right foot is released naturally, so the knee is forward. So that was the easy one. Backward steps, we go from the front towards the back quite naturally. The left knee bends forward, so as we go into a side step for the side facing, again, this toe is placing with the knee in front of it, so the pressure is moving front to back. It's releasing from the right foot from back to the front, so that as we close, once again, the pressure enters the foot front to back and leaves the foot back to front. So it does toe ball flat, toe ball flat, toe ball flat. Half steps get part of this movement, but half beats get part of this movement, but not a complete one most of the time. And so it does toe ball and almost makes it to the heel, but not quite. Toe ball makes it all the way to the heel because we have the time to prepare for a foot beat on one toe ball flat, toe ball flat, toe ball flat, toe ball, toe ball flat, toe ball flat. This rolling action releasing of the weight forward and inward on each step as you release the foot and pressing backwards is what produces what we know as Cuban motion or Latin motion. So that's item number one. Item number two is that in any dance, whether it's a rhythm or a Latin dance or a smoother standard dance, there are times that we put all of our weight on a foot. That's when we want to stop movement. Other times we want to go past that foot, so that will also be a complete weight transfer plus. But on times when we want to change our direction, which is most of the time on the two in cha cha, we have what I describe as a partial weight transfer. You'll usually hear it described as a back rock or back break or a forward rock, or a forward break, and they all mean the same thing. We're interrupting our progression 
And to do that, just like you would do in a shuttle run in phys ed in an elementary school, you would dance or move not all the way to that foot. You would want to be out of balance so that you would now move in the opposite direction. So as we dance, again, starting with the right foot, we would dance one and stop the body weight near the heel of the left foot so that if you were to release the right foot, you would eventually fall backwards. The same thing actually happens here is although we do want to stand on the right foot, we want to stand a little to the left of it so that the body is falling. So that you will have to dance the side step and the side step four and one. Here you want to actually sit backwards so that when you release your right foot from the floor, the body demands the backward action. And I like that all the way through, but today we're just going to focus on staying a little bit away from the changing of direction of foot. So we want to dance, one, stay a little behind the left foot, three, cha cha, two, stay a little in front of the right foot, two, three, cha cha, one, stay a little behind the left foot, three, cha cha, two, stay a little in front of the right foot, two, three, and cha cha, one. This also we talked about in our first cha cha video about the basic action. When we were doing the basic in place, we did side breaks or kukarachas. One of the ways that this is communicated, not only to our own body, but to our partner, is to realize that those side steps are actually breaks with partial weight transfers. So again, starting with the right foot, if we go into a basic in place, we have one, two, three, cha cha, one, two, three, and if we go into a side break with the left foot, You'll notice that I do not release my right heel. That keeps my weight midway between my left and right foot, so that it's easy to get my partner to replace and do the cha cha in place. As I do the break to the right, notice I keep the left heel down, which forces the weight to stay between the feet and makes it easy to tell my partner that we're coming back to the chasse in place. Four and one. If I release my standing, or in this case the right heel, and dance two, where I'm at a complete weight transfer, when I take the right foot off the floor, there's no end, no need that I move sideways forward or backward. So that process of keeping the right or center heel down, foot flat, helps us lead and dance the side breaks, second position breaks, or crouches, whatever you like to call them, much more easily. This does not mean that you might not, for the purposes of competition or performance, where there's a memorized sequence, release that heel so that you can dance two and three, cha cha one, two and three, but that would be very difficult to follow or therefore to lead. So for performance, as opposed to for social communication on the dance floor, you might have more freedom of how you'd like to perform. Thank you so much for joining us. That's a lot of information. You might need to either say, I'm going to take that up with my private instructor when I get out of this isolation, or you might need to run the video a whole bunch of times and dance it. Thank you.